Hi everyone, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. I guess you've clicked on this video because you want to know how to make the most of your time when you commute on public transport to work or university. And the tips that I'm going to share with you today are tips that I have found really helpful on my commute to university. So I go to Queen Mary University and that's in East London and it's really far away from where I live. It takes me about an hour and 40 minutes each way on a good day to get to university. So I spend a lot of time traveling on public transport and nearly four hours a day traveling and that's a lot of time to just be wasting especially as a university student as well when I have a huge workload and I have lots of other commitments as well outside of university so hopefully this video will be really helpful to you and you'll be able to benefit from the tips that I'm going to show you. Before we get started please remember to give this video a thumbs up and also smash the subscribe button so you don't miss any other uploads and let's get started. The first tip I have for you is to read. Now surprisingly, or maybe not surprisingly, a lot of people actually read on the train. If you hop onto a tube during rush hour, you will definitely see many people reading. Towards the start of first semester, I did actually read books on the train, but then I found it to be quite heavy to carry around in my bag. So instead I opted out of reading books on the train and I read newspapers instead. So in London you can get the Metro newspaper for free whenever you get on the tube. You can just grab the newspaper in the tube station. And I think this was one of the most revolutionary things for me. I think this was one of the most revolutionary things for me. Revolutionary, 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 revolutionary Because I was really lazy and I wouldn't really read the news in full depth. So I'd probably just check the weather and read the main headlines on my phone and then get on with my day. But because my commute is so long, I end up reading the whole newspaper. So just by reading the newspaper, I've broadened my knowledge so much because I'm not just reading about the latest celebrity gossip. I'm also reading about political issues that are happening and all sorts of things that I just wouldn't know about if I didn't read the newspaper. I do find myself skipping the sports stuff though because I'm not really interested in that. But I do Generally, when I read the newspaper, I read every article and I've learnt so much from reading the newspapers and also it gives you stuff to talk about because there are so many random things that you find in the newspaper and by reading it, you've broadened your knowledge and then you can talk to your friends about it and share your knowledge and yeah, I think it's a really great way to start your day. Usually what I do is in the mornings I read the Metro and in the evenings I read this other newspaper. I think it's called the Evening Standard. It's also free. So basically you can read two newspapers in one day for free. You don't even have to pay anything. Um, unlike other popular newspapers like the Daily Mail, which I think you have to pay for. My second tip for you is to read through your revision notes. If you're a uni student or even just a student in general, you will have a lot of stuff to revise and you can make the most of your time on the train by reading those. I assume it would be a lot easier if you had an iPad or a laptop or something where you can access everything in one go, but I actually took my folder out and just read through my notes. Obviously it's not the best revision method, but it's a lot better than doing nothing on the train. Just reading through your notes can help you understand it a bit more. Also, if you feel energised and in the mood, you can also do practice questions. I did this sometimes on the train, but only when I wasn't travelling in rush hour, because during rush hour the trains get so full and it's just really uncomfortable to try and take your stuff out of your bag, especially taking out books and pens and stuff. It's just such a hassle and I guess it's also annoying to the people around you. So I used to tend to do practice questions when I would get on the tube at non-peak times. So if I finished university early, for example, then I'd get on the train and then I could do my work. Another good tip is also to do flashcards. Flashcards are great because they're really quick and easy and they're usually pretty small as well so they're very convenient to travel with and they're quite compact and easy to also take out of your bag. So you might find flashcards a better alternative to doing practice questions or reading your notes because it's active recall which is really good for revision and really does help consolidate your knowledge. If you get on the tube you will see nearly everyone wearing headphones or earphones or on some sort of device. I think that's great because you can listen to music if you want to or you can also listen to audiobooks or podcasts, which I think is a much more productive way to spend your time on your commute. After a long day at university, there's nothing I want to do more than to just relax. So in the evenings, I typically just listen to music or read the newspaper. If you have a presentation or a meeting that day, in the morning on your commute, you can 
go through whatever you're supposed to be giving your speech on. Go through your notes. Make sure you absolutely prepare yourself on the train so that you're not panicking and stressing out when it's actually time to do your presentation. That's a really good tip. I would definitely recommend you to do that. I would definitely recommend you to do that. On the tube, you may not get signal everywhere because it's mainly underground. So you might consider downloading ebooks or music or games and stuff like that beforehand so you can easily access it on the tube. Um, on my commute, I often see people watching dramas and movies. So if you've got a series that you're really interested in watching, then feel free to just watch that on the train, you know, relax, watch that and enjoy it. Um, just make sure you have your headphones on though because otherwise it's annoying to everyone on the train. Otherwise it's annoying to everyone on the train. If you're on your way to work, Maybe you can prepare for your work by checking your emails ahead of time and doing small tasks that don't require a lot of effort so that way you're more organised and relaxed at work and you're not rushing or panicking at all. I would definitely recommend you to check your email but probably do that when you have service on your phone. If you're in a rush and you're really really tight on time, consider eating your lunch on the train. Now when I say eat your lunch I don't mean eat foods that are really smelly and that are going to stink up the train because that is my worst nightmare. I really really cannot stand it when someone eats food and it stinks the train up because the train is pretty stuffy as it is and rotten food smells can really just make you feel quite nauseous. So if you're going to eat on the train try to eat something that will not smell bad. So maybe fruit or a sandwich but please, do not eat your egg sandwich or your tuna sandwich on the train because, trust me, <laughs> you will get dirty looks. In the evening when you're tired and you just want to relax, relax on the train. Feel free to sleep. So many people sleep on the train. Sometimes when I get back from uni, my eyes literally just try and close by themselves. I'll try and keep them open, but they just won't. So I just keep my eyes shut on the train and I have my music in. So I'm not sleeping, but I'm resting by just closing my eyes. If you are gonna sleep, just be careful of your possessions, of course, because you don't want anyone to rob them. So just keep your bag in your hand or under your feet or something where you will definitely be aware if someone does try and take something. Also in the evenings when you're a bit low on energy, you might just want to reflect on your day. Think about what was good and what was bad and what could be improved and try and improve yourself for the next day. So maybe at work you didn't finish every single task you were meant to do, or maybe you didn't achieve a certain goal that you were supposed to have achieved that day. Think about why that didn't happen, um, and try to not blame it on external factors because that will not help you out. So don't be blaming things on the weather or different conditions that are out of your league. Try and think of what you could have done to have made your day better. So maybe if you didn't achieve the amount of sales you were meant to do, Maybe you weren't just good enough at persuading people to buy the product. So try and think of different ways to try and get more customers, stuff like that. If you're quite a creative person, feel free to draw or colour on the train. If you want to try and sharpen your brain and try and get it a bit more focused, I would recommend you to do word searches and crosswords and puzzles, stuff like that, that are really engaging for your brain. Um, on the Metro, I know there's definitely a puzzle page which you can do. Um, I have to say they're very hard though. There's Sudoku and I think there's Crossword. I always find the puzzles in the Metro super confusing and hard. Um, the clues just do not ring any bells in my head so I usually don't do those ones but I do have apps on my phone like Lumosity which is apparently good for your brain. I think it is. It's really fun to play as well. Um, just make sure you're not too distracted and you make sure you get off at your stop because once I was very distracted and I did miss my stop and I had to go back, <laughs> which was awkward. And finally, if all else fails, why not talk to the person sitting next to you? It might be difficult for you to start a conversation, but if the person next to you looks like they're also bored, why not start a conversation? Um, I've never done it myself because I'm usually never that bored. <coughs> but nothing wrong with talking to someone next to you. Just make sure you're not annoying, I guess, and don't be too invasive. And yeah, those are all my tips for how to make the most of your commute. If you have any tips that you would like to share, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed, please give this video a thumbs up, smash the subscribe button so you don't miss any other uploads, and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys! Oh,